Hi everyone, welcome. We're down here in my wormery and I'm preparing to feed my newest worm bin, which is right over here. The system's been in service for a week now. And when I set the system up and release the worms into it, I sometimes feed the environment before introducing the worms. Other times I don't. On this occasion, it was just bedding. No food other than a couple scraps leftovers that came with the worms from their old environment. So they're probably due for a feeding. I'm definitely curious to see how things are holding up in here after a week since we launched the worms into here. And something else that I do sometimes is I hang on to the castings that the worms were removed from. And the reason for that is that either they've probably left behind cocoons, and I'd like to leave time for those cocoons to hatch and round up those baby worms, or I think more for the reason that there was probably stragglers when I did the haul out of the worms from their old environment. And their old environment used to be two tubs. I just combined all the castings that were the result of that harvest into here. And the bait boxes down underneath all the covers. And I just want to take a peek in here really quick just to see how things are doing. Mainly to aerate the material. Help it to dry and as a result the worms will be motivated to exit the stuff. So let's start with a quick check in on this and then we'll get to feeding the worms in the new system. So let's get to work. When I put an end to my previous two systems that came prior to these two that we just bought an end to, I followed the same sequence of steps where I combined all the castings into a single container. I used this bait box right here to round up those stragglers and babies and that system I was able to get that done in 31 days. Although, you know, technically I believe that even a few days prior to those 31 days ending, I had already um, I had already pretty much confirmed that the castings left behind had already been pretty much depopulated. I do wonder how things look in here sometimes. I want to just take a peek and make sure moisture level is where it needs to be to entice the worms to come hang out up here. Obviously, we're enticing all the springtails to come over here, too. I'm even wondering if it might be useful to throw a little extra food in here. I can't remember what I might have used as the bait here in the bait box. Clearly, we put a whole bunch of shredded paper in here. But I've got the food that we're going to be feeding the new bin here. So perhaps we can just uh, borrow a little bit of something to include in here a little lettuce leaf, a little cucumber peel, whatever chips off the block of ice of tasty stuff collected here. A couple pieces of potato peel. It does seem to me like the moisture in this is going to ultimately become the, the main draw that's going to attract worms to it because every time I uh, cover up as you saw before there was plastic out here only over the bait box the rest of it is kind of being left to dry and I believe that by tilling up the material we're taking some of this material that's down low for example and bringing it to the surface combining some of the stuff that's already been out on the surface in with the existing material to help dry it off and Eventually, the material, I believe, will get to the point where the worms just won't even want to be in this stuff. If they stumble on that nice little oasis of fresh bedding and moisture and food, they'll almost likely stay and not want to wander back into the finished castings. The other thing I'm curious of is I feel like I'm on a little bit of a search and rescue mission here. I'm pretty sure that it would have ended up with the worms in their new environment but the one thing that did not sort of surface when we uh, when we extracted the worms from their old environments and launched off the new bin last week was the presence of the cork an old cork that's been going from system to system to system over years now and the last time it was uh, seen it was in the oldest of the two bins that were thrown in here. Like I said, it, it's most likely 
in the new system went with the worms probably it was probably part of the horizontal migration feeding zone that I used to collect the worms out of their old environments and as you can see their uh, their castings still have occupants living in them worms here and there and the material that they were in would have been down low it was over on this edge it seems that they were gravitating towards perhaps because the material was a little bit more damp than the rest but now that somewhat damp material is being combined with drier stuff brought up to the surface to let it dry and air out in time after a few more agitations like this the material will just dry out to the point where the worms will simply not want to be in it and in the end just like with the last system that I did this in we'll have a whole bunch of little wormies in the bait box ready to be hauled out of here and then these castings will be able to be considered as truly harvestable if that's the right way to think about it I do not know what this is some sort of fabric or material or something weird I'm gonna exclude it because I don't really know what to make of it in theory this should be finished castings a few little odds and ends might remain a little shell of an avocado or whatever that is I don't know there's little things remaining in it which in my book is fine that's the way I like my castings to be a little bit of organic material to help sustain the, the microbes and the fungi and the bacteria and everything that lives in this stuff and makes it what it is right so it doesn't matter to me if there's a little bit of stuff in it the only stuff I want to really work on is the stuff that's kind of clumped up together into little jumbles and make sure I break those open because if they just sit there in a little jumble whatever moisture it is that's holding it together it doesn't have a chance to you know vapor vaporize away and let the material dry so those clumps are really what I'm after in addition to the cork which is probably not in here I don't think so I think we would have stumbled on it by now if it were but before we um before we cover things up here let's also really quickly get the spray bottle out here so I also want to just make sure the moisture level in here is abundant in the bait box at least everything else should just be left to dry gradually and slowly the worms will just want to move out so I think my squirt bottle should have a little bit of pressure in it not much <laughs> but that's fine we don't need a lot of moisture I just want to add what's already in here is already pretty damp you saw the worms hanging out in it and appearing to be quite comfortable but a little extra jolt of moisture isn't going to hurt, not to mention the moisture coming in with these food scraps. All right, good enough. Let's get this thing buttoned up, put away, and we can get to feeding the new system. Okay, here it is in all its glory. It looks a little, I don't know. All kinds of weird different things going on here but it's really just leftovers from their old environment the old top coverings that had been out on the old boxes feeding zone indicators this stuff I imagined as all being useful stuff that we can include as supplementary bedding when we finally get back in here to give them their first feeding so that'll be some of the bedding we use I've also got my prepared bedding and other stuff like that although we did build the system pretty much at capacity almost making me wonder if there's even really enough room in here to consider building it out further. It might be better just to let it ride for now. Maybe we'll add the food, not worry so much about supplementing bedding on this occasion. All right, so we got a tomato sprout here, another one. Some seeds of other things here. All these castings were not produced over the past week. They're just the material that came with the worms. The stuff that they were inhabiting in their old horizontal migration feeding zones this stuff can at this point i believe just be sort of blended in with the rest of the material in the bin i just got a little bit nervous working in a system that's this close to the the rim of the container because if i were to try to excavate a little 
trench down here in the middle which I guess is exactly what I do need to do now anyway so let's just give it a try I just worry that I'm gonna shove material out of the system over the edge onto the table onto the floor make a big mess so we'll be careful we'll see what we could do about just carefully opening up a little bit of a trench into which we could place today's feeding I guess the other beneficial thing we can do is sort of just blend in a lot of this old material that came with the worms into the surrounding stuff and there are just worms all over the place they seem quite content down in here so I guess I should just clarify that I did actually try to inoculate the material that the system was built out of something I just really haven't paid a lot of attention to in a lot of my recent systems where I just set up a new bin you know drop in the drop in the bedding materials throw in some food and then you know we'll see what happens but basically there is a huge benefit to taking some casting material and including it in the build of the um, the build of the bedding because the castings material is abundantly populated with all kinds of microorganisms that the worm bin definitely needs in order to be a healthy thriving place for the little wormies to live in so even with um, a new batch of material that I just mixed up into a new bin for my next new system that will come eventually in a number of weeks, this system was built with some inoculant, just some worm castings thrown into the bed. And I even threw in some gummy bears, a few little pieces of candy, thinking that perhaps the sugar would be a good fuel that's really kind of the way I thought of it because I thought I was just kind of fueling the microorganisms not so much putting in food into feed worms so uh, I just wonder if it really helped a lot hopefully it did some of the stuff that came over from their old environment were the seeds of a couple mangoes that you see right there this is the, the stem of a pumpkin pretty puny at this point Definitely getting worked down. One thing that just hasn't surfaced yet is the the cork. <laughs> it's not a big deal, and I'm not going to go turning the world upside down looking for it. It's got to be here somewhere. Either here with the worms or over in their castings that we just examined earlier. I'll, I'll keep going back in there on a regular basis to, you know, till things up and break things up. And hopefully we'll find it either there or here. I don't know. My, my money is on it being here somewhere. That's probably where we'll find it. Hopefully we'll find it, but we'll see. <laughs> so this is, you know, just me kind of following through on the original idea of utilizing all this nice, useful material down in the bin rather than just having it sit out there on the surface waiting for its next mission it's just gonna go in now as a little bit of supplementary bedding utilize that little bit of space that we have let's not forget we got to leave room for their feeding which is also going to consist of one of these decorative gourds or little pumpkin I don't know is it a pumpkin is it a gourd what is it I don't even know what to call it when you go buy your pumpkin to make your jack-o'-lantern out of at Halloween, sometimes you'll see these other unusual kinds of um, gourds, I think they are. I don't even know. If anyone knows what I'm supposed to be calling those things, then please let me know. <laughs> and I think that they're strictly for decorative purposes. I don't know if people will eat those things. It's just my assumption that the worms will. Hopefully they will. You can see a good bit of frost and ice coming in. All these, all these chunks of lettuce, all these pieces of cucumber, all these veggies have been emitting their moisture into the little spaces in here. I think the cucumber peel is one of the main culprits for that. Whenever I see cucumber peel, I almost always see a ton of moisture surrounding it. 
So that's almost their entire feeding. I still got coffee, a day's worth of coffee over here. But before we put that in, I'm gonna throw in a little bit of grit on top of the foods, just pulverized eggshell. Help the worms break down the foods that they're eating. And over here, this is the uh, this is the coffee that we're going to be giving them, but it has already torn open on the side. I just didn't want to have the coffee making a mess. So let's just sprinkle the coffee in, and as a result of that, we've also now got ourselves a feeding zone indicator to lay out on top when we're finished. And for those of you who are regulars here, you'll know that when I put in coffee, I have a tendency to want to also sprinkle in a little bit of my worm chow. I mixed up a new batch. It's kind of cool when you got a brand new batch, every layer that was slightly different from the next. I'm not sure if its colors show up, but it's got these little interesting tiger stripes going down darker later, darker later. So eventually it'll all blend together, I believe, but right now it still has these faint color differences. This stuff is in large part pumpkin seed and another ingredient that it um, whoa, <laughs> is made up of is these noodles that were not made out of wheat or grain that were made out of veggies. So I believe that the stuff, where is it? It's over there. Yeah, it's um, fusilli noodles made out of lentil. So hopefully it's a worm chow mix that the worms favor. A little bit of seeds, a little bit of veggie matter. I think there might have been some chunks of rice. A little bit of rice, a little bit of pepper seeds. I've been putting away the seeds out of peppers lately. That was my, that was my big hobby while I was uh, pulling peppers out of the garden and eating them. I would always hang on to their seeds. So I amassed a pretty good sized collection of pepper seeds, some of which ended up in my worm chow and a few other things. But those were the main ingredients for this batch. So, I, f I don't know, we're pretty close to the rim here. Have I got enough uh, space in here to level things off and not be sort of bulging out over the top surface of the bin? I think we should be okay. <laughs> I just have this feeling like I want things to be nice and level, but I'm just going to have to settle for the best I can do and now we can just start coming back in here drop in our feeding zone indicator to show ourselves where we last fed not that it would be so difficult to come back and find it the next time but that was a pretty generous feeding if you ask me I think we could probably wait another week at least before checking in lately the interval between check-ins on my systems has been closer to two weeks so we'll just see how things fit into the schedule over here at least I don't feel like it's an urgent matter anymore to get them fed because you know sending a, a new batch of worms off into a new environment without any food kind of makes me feel uneasy and makes me want to just get them some sustenance so that they're in good shape to continue on all right everyone that's it for our check-in on my newest worm been one week old now with the red wigglers the occupants of two systems now merged into one I've also got a video from when we launched it a week ago that not a lot of people have responded to. Usually I'll get the input of people um, on how many worms they think we launched into a new system and I take all those estimates and average them. So I've got a number coming together but it's only the estimates of mine and five other people. So I'm going to put a link up in the corner, invite everyone to go check out the launch video. And after you've watched that video, please be sure to respond to that video with a comment. Let me know how many worms you think live in here. In that video, it's much easier to see them when they were hauled out of their old environment, when they were released into here. So it's a fun video to check out. I definitely recommend it. So that's it for the video here today. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, as always, please don't forget to leave me a quick thumbs up before you go. That's always really appreciated. And if you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel. That's very much appreciated as well. All right, everyone. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye now.